choosing keywords for your research paper can be a very, very important part to make sure that it's discoverable by search engines. And no one else is teaching this. I can't believe it. In today's modern world, what do you do when you want to find something? You head to a search engine, whether it's Google, Google Scholar, uh, YouTube, or anywhere else, Scopus even. Like that is where people go to find papers in a modern online uh, repository of science. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how you choose keywords because no one is teaching it. It's super important and it can increase your citation rate exponentially if you just consistently keep on using keywords that people are actually searching for. It sounds simple and it kind of is. Let's get into it. This video is brought to you by my ebook, The Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit. If you like the tips in this video, that ebook contains way more. Also, go sign up to my newsletter where you'll get five emails, everything from how to write the perfect abstract, online tools for scientists, and more. It's content I don't publish anywhere else, so go sign up to my newsletter. The link is in the description. In the past, people used to go to the library to find research. They used to subscribe to their favorite journals to get research, but these days it is all online. Now the thing is, is that it's not just about the keyword section. Now the keyword section in papers is something that was always an afterthought. Like as I was submitting the paper, some journals say, oh, just supply some keywords and you go, oh, I don't know this one, this one, and this one. You just choose random stuff from the paper, but that's not where keywords are the most important. The most important place to, to put keywords that people are typing into Google so that they find your research is in the title and in the abstract. That seems to be the most important place because that is the, uh, I guess, where Google and other search engines are getting their metadata so that they can provide you with the appropriate papers when you type it in to Google Scholar or Google or any other search engine. And the thing is, it has to be easily Googleable. So when we look at science, when we look at research, it can get really field specific. Ugh throat thing again. It can get really field specific. And so what happens is that uh, we choose stuff that no one's searching for. Like even people in that field are not searching for because it's super, super niche. So I'll talk about in this video how you can choose the appropriate keywords, how to kind of estimate the volume and whether or not people are actually Googling this thing or if it's far too niche. You're kind of looking at a pyramid where, you know, most people are Googling this about a topic, then you've got these niche stuff, and then right at the very top, you've got your research, but really you're kind of tackling underneath where people are Googling the most uh, terms that still point to your research, um, but there's no point putting in something that's so niche that it only relates to your paper, because people don't know your paper's out there yet, and that's why we're doing this. The keywords are very important. Okay, let's have a look at the tools and how you actually find the appropriate keywords. So the first way that you can actually find keywords is by heading over to Google Scholar, typing in your field and just playing about with different terms and have a look at what Google suggests as an autocomplete. Now the fact that it is in autocomplete means that there is a higher volume of people searching for this because otherwise why would Google offer up that auto suggestion? And what you've got to do is kind of explore your field and, and just kind of keep a running list in an Excel document or a Word document of keywords words that pop up in your field. Now you may have to dig a little bit to actually find them. You may have to change some of the words. You may have to play about a little bit with the, the order of the words or the structure of the words or the phrases. And uh, there are ways to find out where to start. We'll talk about that next. But ultimately just head over to Google Scholar, start typing in stuff and see what autocomplete has to say. That is a really awesome place to start your keyword search. Then head over to just normal Google. Make sure you're not logged in into your browser because it does kind of remember your search history. So make sure you're um, logged out from your session or your account and just do the same thing. Start exploring around, start exploring those keywords. And by looking at the autocomplete, you'll start to get a good idea of what sort of things people are searching for in relation to the research you're about to publish. Now let's have a look at, you know, if you're just completely unaware of what level to start at, this next tool is going to change your paper writing life. Now I talked about a pyramid, where at the bottom you've got kind of like common terms, the most common terms in your field, then you've got stuff in the middle, which you know is a little bit more niche, and then you've got stuff right at the very top, and no one's searching for that because they don't know it's there. That is the point of research. So you need to find stuff at the bottom and stuff in the middle of that triangle. Now a good place to find out where that exists for your field 
field is an awesome tool called Answer the Public. Answer the Public is essentially a way to find out what people are asking in your field. So head over there and type in your research field and see what happens. Sometimes you'll get zero results or very few and that means you're too far up the pyramid, you're far too niche. Look broader, go a little bit broader. Okay, so in my case, it's like transparent uh, semiconductor uh, uh, solar cells, not very good. Organic photovoltaic solar cells, solar cells in general. Just keep going down that pyramid until you find enough volume. And that will give you an idea of what the people uh, out there are actually typing into search engines. Now, this isn't foolproof, and you could probably go a little bit more niche than this thing suggests, but it's a really awesome way to find out where to start, where the bulk of the searches take place, and the keywords that they suggest can also be used in your list. And uh, it's a fantastic way to actually just find out what people people are searching for in your research field. Go check it out, it's a really awesome tool. So now you've got your list of keywords in your Excel spreadsheet or your Word document, now you need to work out which one is the most effective to use. Now it comes down to two things. First of all, how often that keyword or that keyword phrase is searched, and the second one is how natural does it fit into a title or an abstract. Now the thing is, the first one is hard to kind of get a real data um, sort of judgment on just because no one gives that information out. Google is very secretive with that information, but there are a few things you can do to check. The first one is if it is in autocomplete, it's a good chance that people are searching for that quite often. If it's not in autocomplete, but you found it in something like Answer the Public, or you found it in uh, you know What Other People Ask, which is another great place, by the way, to find um, keywords, is have a look at what other people ask when you type in a term. Um, if it's in those two sections, it's probably going to be okay to use. Um, and another place you can go is Google Keyword Planner, which they use for people who want to sell advertising online. Um, and that will give you an idea of the volume of, of uh, times it is searched per month. Um, and also a place like Uber Suggest can give you an idea of how often something is searched. But those tools don't really work for science keywords. They work for like online article keywords, but they don't really work for science keywords because the volume is so much lower. But um, yes, using those tools can give you an idea that it is searched a lot and that it should be incorporated into your title. Um, so yes, look for ones with high search volume or is in auto Google, Google autocomplete or in other questions people ask section in the Google search and it will be perfect for you to use in your title or your abstract. So the second tip is to make it sound as natural as possible in the title or in the abstract. Now, at first I was like, that's kind of relatively difficult, but because science is clunky, it's really wordy, it can be actually relatively easy to squeeze these terms in. But make sure that it passes just common sense check, that it's not just keyword cramming for the sake of it, and that the keyword actually fits well in your title and in your abstract, and that it will pass peer review. You know, you don't want people to be like, that's a weird sentence. You wanna make sure that it's nice and natural. So it's that balancing act. Yes, you want one that is very high search volume, but if it doesn't sound natural and doesn't fit well with your research, you have to just leave it alone and go for one that does search, um, that it's got a high search volume and fits really well and naturally into your abstract. Um, so using it in your title, your abstract, and then in the keyword section, if your journal offers that, is really important, um, and it is a balance between the volume and how naturally you can squeeze it in to your paper. And if you do that for every single paper as you're going along throughout your career, you can do it for conference presentations, you can do it for anything that has got a title and an abstract, make it more easily searchable online. That is how you get more citations. It's as easy as that, but no one's teaching it, I don't know why. Another great thing that I think is underutilized in the research world is using these keywords to actually guide research. Now, if you are in the game of trying to increase citations, increase your peer review output, increase everything, you should be looking at this as a tool to help you guide where you can take your research. Because if a lot of people are searching for a problem or a question or a query, you can tell people that, yeah, the people actually want to know about this and this could be a good place I could steer my research. So don't use it as like it has to be there, but it could be a good way if you've got a few options. Go and Google, go have a look at the search volume, go have a look at the keywords that pop up in two different branches of your research and maybe one of them will uh, allow you to kind of see that there's more search 
search volume and that there's more keywords related around that thing. And you could sort of direct your, your work that way. That means that the work coming out of that little new field means that uh, it's gonna be more searchable, people are gonna be more likely to find it, and you're gonna get more citations, which will help boost your index, and then you'll be super awesome uh, academic person forever. So there we have it. That is how you actually use keywords in your peer-reviewed papers, in the title, in the abstract, and in the keyword section. You can also put it in the introduction and other places where it fits naturally. But using keywords is something that is so important when you're searching for information online, but no one is teaching it. Um, Go check out my ebook, The Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, if you want more awesome tips like this one. Um, it's on my academiainsider.com website. Go check that out there as well, because that is also a place where I have my insider academic forum, where people can help each other become better PhD students, academics, and more. So go check that out, and I shall see you in the next video.